Hello dear. It's another beautiful exchange service at the Lighthouse Christian Archery Center. We trust that you had a wonderful time on Sunday. I can guarantee you that today you're going to have another amazing time. We implore you to leave your questions in the comment section and also don't forget to share this link with your friends. We want you to share this gospel with people. Uh, right about now, we'll be welcoming the Ispragas to lead us in a powerful worship session. See you later. Oh, we thank you for your love, Lord. We thank you for your love, Lord. We thank you for your love, Lord. Because you have loved us with an everlasting love, Lord. We bless your holy name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Behold the fire that's high. The mystery he lavishes on us. I see cries out to thee. Oh, how desperately he wants. Like a candle to the sun Unfailing Father What compares to His great love Behold, Behold. His only Son His only Son
time. We're going to do this together. I don't want us to ever get too familiar with this love. Because even the Bible prays for us to have grace to understand this love. So that means it is something that we can keep receiving. It is something we can keep understanding. He has already given the love, but our knowledge and our understanding of it can expand. So I want us to declare this together as a church this morning. I want our voices to rise, our hearts to be fully yielded as we sing together. Are we ready to do this? Then sings my soul, then sings my soul. So 
I will not be silent about this love. I will not be silent. I will not be silent about this love. I will tell the world of 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 this love. Thank you, dear Lord Jesus. Welcome to another uh, beautiful exchange service. It's a midweek service right here from Lighthouse, Lagos, Nigeria. And we are so excited to have you join in our service again tonight. Uh, maybe I will ask the question, how was your day? And if your day is still ongoing, wherever you're watching us from, I would like to specially welcome you to our beautiful exchange service tonight. Thank God for the gift of life. It's been a wonderful uh, time. We've been looking at a series, Health and Healing. And today we just... Um, we're coming to the end of that series. I know that we'll expect probably, of course, we pray for the sick after each of these. But beyond just being sick, uh, we have rightly emphasized various aspects that we need to maintain health and healing as believers in Christ. And today, I, I, I want to especially talk about building persuasion. We need to be persuaded about our faith. Our faith is more than a magic one. It is um, a, a, a state of um, our heart, the attitude of the heart, uh, that's being convinced in the word of God and the promises of God, which are yes and amen for us in Christ Jesus, being uh, believing him totally with our heart, trusting that every word of God is pure, Every word of God can be applied to our lives. I want you to please, um, if you, I believe that it will also be displayed on the screen, uh, you can open your Bibles with me uh, to Acts chapter 17. Uh, let's read about someone who built persuasion in this word of God. And we're talking about the Apostle Paul. And in, from verse 22, Acts 17, 22, he said, Then Paul stood in the midst of Areopagus and said, Men of Hatings, I perceive that in all things you are very religious. Why? He said, I was passing through and considering the object of your worship, and I even found an altar with this inscription to the unknown God. Said, therefore, the one whom you worship without knowing him, I proclaim to you, he said, God, who made the world and everything in it, and since he is Lord of heaven and the heart, does not dwell in temple made with hands, 
Noisy worship with men's hands, as though he needed anything, since he gives to all life, breath, and all things. And he has made one blood of every nation of men to dwell on all the face of the earth, and has determined their appointed times and boundaries of their dwellings, so that they should seek the Lord in the hope that they might grope for him and find him, though he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being. He said, as some of your own poets have said, for we also are his offspring. May the Lord bless this reading and the hearing of his word in our hearts. My emphasis today is on verse 28. He said, for in him we live and move and have our being. In him we live and move and have our being. When we're talking about health and wholeness, uh, we need to also emphasize that, that we need to build persuasion in God and on his, in his word. The Bible says every promise of God, they are yes and amen for us in Christ Jesus. You know, in the natural, we build persuasion without even knowing. Uh, when you, I mean, I, I'm, I'm, um, we are transmitting from um, a building, and um, the reason why we will confidently do what we are doing is because we have confidence in the strength of this building. We have confidence uh, that nothing is going to go wrong, nothing is going to go wrong with this recording, except there is a natural occurrence like earthquake or, and, and, the, uh, and the like. This building stands strong and solid. It's been years since we erected it. The same thing, we exercise and build persuasion in the natural thing. Uh, we, we, we travel around. We travel in cars. We travel in airplanes. Um, we travel using the train. Some people travel to transport goods and services. I mean, in the vast ocean, the ship. I mean, recently I was discussing with, with someone, a friend of mine, who happened to be a sailor, and he was saying that his ship that is travel weight is about 300 meters long, and it has about 14-story building. And they have goods loaded on this ship, and they travel around the world. I mean, I mean, in days, they make continents. The truth is that there is a persuasion, persuasion built in the strength of that ship to be able to perform those functions. The same thing, we have airplanes who take hundreds of people, yet with their loads and luggages, they carry goods, yet, I mean, there is just that persuasion that it's going to get to the destination. And I'd like to bring it into our spiritual life. We must, for us to be healthy, for us to be whole, for us to experience health and healing, we must build persuasion in the word of God. We must build persuasion in God. We must build persuasion in his word. In Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, the Bible says, He who come to God must believe that he is and is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Every promise of God, they are yes and amen for us in Christ Jesus. So, persuasion, we build our faith, we build our confidence, we build our assurance in the word of God, in the God of the word, and then the word that has, he has spoken. He says, so shall my word, Isaiah 55, verse 11, that has gone out of my mouth, it shall not return unto me void, but it shall perform the things which I have sent it to, the purpose where unto I have sent it to. So God and his word are one. 
And we can't build persuasion in it. I am talking to you now. You can't separate uh, my words from my person. You're looking at my image. You can see that my lips is moving. And you can hear me clearly by reason of, of the equipment in this place. It has amplified my voice. But you can't readily say, oh, that is his words. That is his voice. Or that is his personality. The same thing. God and his word is one. You cannot separate his word. And the Bible even talks about that. The word of God is actually Jesus. It's the personality of Jesus. So you can't separate him. And if you're talking about health, if you're talking about healing, if you're talking about wholeness, if you're talking about transformation of lives, you cannot separate God with his word. So Paul was traveling. I mean, he got to this space, Arepagos. And he saw that the people in that city were very religious. And what is religion? Man's attempt to reach God. What is Christianity? The way of life that Christ has highlighted for us, has made for us as men, as the way of salvation, the way of total deliverance. Salvation means total deliverance. It is the word, total deliverance, total prosperity, total peace. So Jesus is the author of our salvation. So he has. And where we read today was just simply saying, oh, these people, they are very serious. They are looking for God. And they even have an inscription to an unknown God. And Paul came in the fullness of the gospel to tell them, oh, well, you may consciously have been worshiping this God and you are not even aware of it. But let me tell you about the God I'm introducing you to. Is a God who dwell in temples, not made with hands. And if you look at us, when a man is in Christ Jesus, 2 Corinthians 5, 17, is a new creation. All things have passed away. All things have become new. So a new creation is living their lives in God, is in Christ Jesus. And so all the blessings of salvation become that man, that woman become a recipient of it. And then that's not just the head. The third person of the Trinity, the Holy Spirit, now becomes an ever-present help for that person, an ever-present companion, an ever-present friend. And so the Holy Spirit lives in the heart of the believer. So literally, we have become the temple of the Holy Spirit. We are not, I mean, uh, when we say things like, oh, uh, the church, a lot of people, what goes on in the interpretation of the word church is a building. Something that happens or takes place, uh, we call it service in a location. No, the believer is the church, is the call out one. We've been called out from sickness into health, from darkness into light, from confusion into peace, from um, being disappointed into being encouraged. So the, the word of God is the one that gives us it, the word of God. So our persuasion is in God and the God of these words. So we have the Bible as an inspiration from God. And the Bible says it is profitable. All scripture, 2 Timothy chapter 2, uh, chapter 3, verse 17, all scripture is given by the inspiration of God and it is profitable, 2 Timothy 3, 17. It is profitable for doctrine, for instruction, for teaching. He said that the man of God may be thoroughly furnished and perfect unto good works. So the scripture is given, 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. He said all scripture is given by the inspiration of God and it is profitable. So the word of God is profitable for everyone who has built persuasion or who is willing to build persuasion. It's profitable for teaching. It's profitable for correction. It's profitable for instruction in righteousness. It's profitable for reproof to guide us through this life. And then that at the end, we may be thoroughly Furnish. We may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. You may talk about this good work. Ephesians 2.10 gives us an insight. It said, we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus 
on to good works. One of the good works is to emulate the works of Jesus and then do the greater works of Jesus. And Acts 10, 38 talks about these good works. It says, how God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with Holy Spirit and with power, and he went about doing good. So when we build persuasion in the word of God, when we build persuasion that all these promises are yes and amen in Christ Jesus, then he accompanies us to do good works. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, for us today, let us understand we are not without help. We can build persuasion in God. We can build persuasion in His Word, His promises. We can build persuasion of our faith. You know, the Bible says some trust in chariots, other people may trust in horses. He said, but we have chosen to trust. In the name of the Lord our God. He said, what happens? While they are falling, we are still standing because our persuasion is in the word of God. So Paul described this God. He said, he's worship. He said, he's not worship with men's hand. He said, he did not need anything, but rather he has given us life. He has given us breath. He has given us all things. And then he made all the nations the blood, the different races, people. And then he made each of the country and appoints their boundaries. I, I know this may sound strange. I, I believe that his intention is that man should interact. We should have freedom all over the place. But hey, what do we have? We have closed borders. We have restrictions today. We need to get visa maybe because of the way we have lived because some people don't like to live within boundaries, really. But the truth is that, hey, maybe that's not God's original intention, as we will agree. And he says, I love this part. He said, he's not far, verse 27. He said, he's not far from each one of us. And verse 28 now climbs and says, for in him we live, move, and have our being. What is the encouragement tonight? The encouragement is very simple. We need to identify with him if we will really build persuasion in him. Open your Bible, please, to Romans chapter 4. Let's read verse 21 together. Romans chapter 4 and verse 21. Okay, let's read from verse 20. It said, he did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief. That's how to build persuasion. Not wavering. The Bible says, he who comes to God must believe that he is and is a reward of those who diligently seek him. He said, not wavering, not wavering, not in doubt, not weak in their persuasion. So look at what it says in verse 20. He did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith. He built persuasion. He, he built confidence in God and his word. And then the attitude brought an attitude of thanksgiving. He said, giving glory to God. Verse 21 of Romans 4, I love it. He said, I'm being fully convinced other translation says, being fully persuaded. I mean, there's just something that God and his word will do in the life of a believer. Even when there are um, things that are confusing, things that didn't, are not going well, when we choose to look into the mirror of the world, it produces an image, a, confidence, a confidential image. I mean, you're just so confident that even though you may not have uh, the thing in tangible form yet, but because you put your persuasion, you put your confidence in God and his word, is able. Look at what he says, which I want us to read. He said, being fully convinced that what he had promised, he was also able to perform. Abraham didn't have it. I mean, he was trusting for Sarah, his wife, to have a child. And then 
through that process, the process of receiving that miracles that brought health and healing into their household is what Paul was emphasizing here. He said they did not waver at the promise of God. They did not exercise unbelief. Secondly, thirdly, they were strengthened in faith. And then they were giving glory to God. And then fifthly, he said they were fully persuaded. So five things there for health and healing, building your persuasion in God's word. Hey, do not waver. Don't treat God's promises as just something. You know, that's the way people look at probably the Bible today. Oh, it's just one story build, uh, book that existed in some ages past. Some people don't see the need for dependence on God. So why am I depending on something that I cannot see? Well, I'd like to throw a question to us today. Um, you know, the, the subject of God is like saying, to someone or asking someone, do you have a brain? What do you think their response will be? Of course, yes, they do have a brain. But the truth is that, can they see their brain? And the answer is no. Is their brain functioning? The answer is yes. And they, no one has ever waited until their brain, or they can, they can see how their brain functions before they believe that they have a brain. It's the same thing. And even in the natural, most of us don't even know I mean, when we have to travel here, travel, we don't even know who the pilot is. We don't know the color of the screen that the pilot is wearing. Those things become irrelevant. All that we knew is that we bought a ticket that was supposed to take us to one de destination, and we didn't. We were there at the airport on time, and the responsibility is that we get to our destination. People don't even think about turbulence. They don't think about the in-between travel. All they know is that they have bought a ticket from one point and to another, and they have partnership with an airline. They don't even know who, the, who is the owner. Sometimes you don't even know who the owner of the airline is. You don't know the state of the plane. You are not there when they satisfy, certify it, fit to travel, yet you put confidence that, oh, if this flight, flight is supposed to be six hours, you have that measure of confidence that in another six hours, you will arrive at your destination. The same way, we may not be able to figure out God. That's what Paul was writing there in Acts 17. But hey, these are the true pointers that this God exists. He doesn't dwell in temple made with hands. I mean, it, it, it lives in the heart of man. I mean, we can know him if we, when we choose to, when we choose to respond to his love. John 3, 16 says he loved the world so much that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. John 3, 17 says, For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world may be saved through him. God is real. God is active in our days. When we choose to respond to him, I mean, like what Paul declared, after building that persuasion, for in him we live, because he created the boundaries of the nation. He put men in their rightful position. He said, in him we live, move, and have our beings. I pray that we will continually build persuasion in his word. There are many things we need to identify ourselves with because identification will give us a sense of belonging. In him we live, in him we move, in him we have our being. Identification with Christ will help us to understand the authority that has been given to us. The Bible talks about this in Ephesians chapter 2, if you read verses 4, four to seven, you probably read these two statements. We are raised together with him. And then he said, we are seated with Christ. We are not seated in the place of defeat. We are not seated in the place of sickness. We are seated in the place of authority and power. And when we identify with him, the full benefit of the gospel become ours. Galatians chapter two, verse 20, Paul identified with him despite his past life. And you know, sometimes today, we tag other people by the way they live their lives in the past, maybe in the present, but we know no man. 
after the flesh when it comes to salvation of the soul of such people. Because when they are in Christ, they are new creation. All things are passed away. All things have become new. Paul says, I am crucified. The same Paul, the apostle in Galatians 2.20, with Christ. He said, nevertheless, that I live. But there is a difference. He said, the life which I now live, I live by faith in the Son of God who died and gave his life for me. I pray that the blessings of the Lord will rest upon your life. I pray you will not build persuasion in the flesh. You will not build a on just what you can see, persuasion in life, what you can feel, what you can touch, what you can hear, what you can smell, your persuasion will daily be in the Word of God. God bless you. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for staying with us. We believe that you have been impacted by God's Word and the message that we have received. Right now, we'll be taking our tithes and offerings. We want to say a big thank you for your donations and goodwill towards the ministry. Your donations help us reach a large number of people across the world. To give, you can use any of the mediums being displayed on the screen right now. All right, we'll be joining the service right now. Don't forget, pull up your pen, your paper, and take down notes as we continue. Father, we want to say thank you for today's service. Thank you for the blessing of your word, the blessing of the gospel. Thank you for the things that you have revealed to our hearts today. Our minds are persuaded in your word because we know that every of your promises, they are yes and amen for us in Christ Jesus. Thank you for everyone in this service tonight, for those who are looking to begin a relationship with you. I ask by the power of your spirit that you will draw them near to yourself. And Lord, as they respond, that you sent Jesus to our world, he died, was buried, and he was raised from the dead for our justification. And as they confess him as their Savior and their Lord, thank you for salvation is in their household. And Lord, beyond that, thank you for healing, healing of our emotions, healings of our bodies. Thank you because all things have become ours in Christ Jesus. We bless you for the blessing of life, the blessing of health, the blessing of peace, the blessing of wealth. We bless and glorify your name. Thank you, Heavenly Father. And as many who are in this service tonight who are sick, I ask for healing. I ask for total restoration to health and healing. We bless you, we honor you. Blessed be your glorious name. For we pray with thanksgiving from our heart. In Jesus' name, amen. If you trust for healing, I mean, this is the encouragement. Just do something you are not able to do before this service. And as you exercise that faith, building your persuasion in the word of God, the healing power of God, which is already upon you, is actively, the pain goes, the sickness goes, and then you daily begin to renew your mind and that provision. If you are trusting for healing or you are trusted for healing or you have prayed and believed God, uh, please read further and meditate further on Isaiah 53, 4 and 5. Isaiah 53, 4 and 5. Read further on Matthew 8, 17. Just meditate upon this thing. Matthew 8, 17. Uh, Hebrews 13, 8. Jesus, the same yesterday and forevermore. I meditate upon 1 Peter 2, 24. He said that he may be fulfilled, that which was written, that which was spoken. He himself, and he has taken away our sicknesses, he has taken away our sorrow, and by his stripes we were healed. Meditate upon this, and then give, keep thanking God. And you will particularly see some healing are totally instantaneous. I believe people fell into that category tonight. Some are gradual. As you meditate on the word of God, you suddenly find out that the symptoms are all gone. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for peace of mind for everyone who has responded to the word of healing tonight. We give you praise in Jesus' name. 
And thank you everyone for joining in our service. It's always a pleasure. I want you to recommend this YouTube channel, this Facebook channel to someone. Let them become a recipient of the blessings of the gospel. And thank you everyone who is giving to help us take the message of the gospel to all the nations. Thank you for your commitment. With your commitment, we are able to reach more people. We are able to, I mean, give scholarship to people. We are able to help people with their medical bills. There are lots that your money has done for the sake of the gospel. And above all those other good works, we are able to reach souls for Christ. Thank you, everyone. And from all of us in Lagos, Lighthouse, Nigeria, we say a good night and a wonderful evening to you. Shalom over you and your family in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you. Have a lovely day. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. I believe you had an awesome time in God's presence. We encourage you to stay connected by following us on all our social media platforms at Lighthouse NGL. That is Lighthouse NGL on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and on YouTube. You could also connect with us on our website at lighthousengine.org. If you are in need of counseling or you are in need of prayers, you can send us a mail at pastor at lighthousengine.org. See you on Sunday.